Well, hello there. It's Rusty Smith for Record Mix Repeat. It's the Saturday after Black Friday, and I have been inundated with all these different offers from all these different people who make all the great stuff for home studios, and I fell victim to one of the offers. I decided I was going to go with the offer from Sonarworks Sound ID Reference Software and Microphone that integrates seamlessly with my Apollo X8 Generation 1 interface. Yeah, great sales pitch, and I thought this may be really cool. I looked at a few videos on this, saw what the setup procedure was, and I said, I'm just gonna go for it. This, Let's do this. So UPS delivered it today, and here it is, and I'm gonna install it. Let's see how this goes. Okay, I've taken it out of the box. Here it is, ta-da! Uh, we're gonna see how this works with our system and what a pain in the neck it is to hook up. There you go. Hey, they got a Black Friday sale. I think I've already been hooked into that one, huh? Little show here while I'm installing the license, so that's kind of entertaining. I like that idea. It says it's used in 160,000 uh, studios, which means there's too many studios in the world. No wonder nobody can make any money in the studio business. <laughs> I think there's, there's more studios than there are 7-Elevens at this point. So after registering my license, a tutorial starts to show me how to set things up. Stay where you are. Measurements in progress. The software figures out how far apart your speakers are. And then you go through this big ordeal of measuring things and making sure that the mic's in the right place so they know how far apart the speakers are and how far away the listening spot is. And then they go through this whole thing of uh, where you're moving the mic around. It's getting the sound out of the speakers and the software is measuring the reaction of the sound in the room. And like I say, there's a lot of videos online that show you how to do this and uh, they're very helpful. Hmm. Well, quick little blurb for the channel here. Please subscribe if you like what you're seeing. Hit a like button, leave a comment, let me know what you think. I love doing these videos and uh, it would really help me out a whole lot. Yeah, Rusty Smith for Record, Mix, Repeat. All right, so I got this stuff working. It took me a while to wrap my head around the software. I'm not gonna deny that. The interface was, it wasn't like totally self-explanatory or very intuitive. It took me, you know, an hour to figure out, okay, this is how the software works. Hopefully I can explain it to you in the next five minutes. Okay, so this is what the Sound ID reference software looks like. After you've analyzed the room, this is what you end up with. You have a selection of graphs you can look at before, which is the analysis of the room, after the calibration that's being utilized, the phase, the limits employed, and the target. Lighter purple is left, the darker purple is right. So this is what the analysis of the room was. All right, kind of all over the map here. So that's the frequency response of the room. So here's the calibration. If you look, you'll see that the calibration, the green, is basically just a mirror image of the analysis, okay, to correct the issues. And if you get rid of the before, here is the EQ being employed. This is the, what they call the calibration curve, all right? And now, here is the simulated after. If we click that on, well, the simulated after is the purple thing here, all right? So this is the simulation of what is happening now with the EQ employed. Still a little bit of variation down here, in a couple of dB, low end is always tricky. So if we get rid of the calibration employed, now we see the frequency response after the calibration. And here's the target, which is of course flat. You're never gonna hear these frequencies anywhere. Probably don't want to. So I start listening to music um, after I do this. And I gotta tell you, I hated the way it sounded. It sounded terrible to me. I was like, well, this if this is the improvement, then I don't like it. So feeling like, uh, well, that's not what I expected. I expected it to sound great right out of the chute. But anyway, sometimes flat doesn't sound great. I do a little bit of research and I come to find out that uh, you can customize the curve. And so if you see right down here, this is the flat target. 
That is the profile that's saved. And then you can go to custom target. And I wanted to hear more definition in the, uh, you know, between 100 and 200, because I was used to that. The speakers had a lot of information in that area that was being corrected. <clears throat> so here I came up with a, a custom target. Here you can see I put in just a little under 2 dB at 116 hertz. And the good news is the peaks and valleys that were present prior on the before, we had this big peak here, then a valley, then another, and then these peaks here, and then going like that. So now, after our calibration, we're here. So I wanted to hear more of this. And I hear more of that now. And after I did this little adjustment, I switched on to the tunes that I was listening to. And what I was listening to was, was songs that I think that are mixed well and, and, and that I like a lot. So a song that I like, well, the way it sounds a whole bunch is this tune right here, Share a Pillow by a great band called Field Music from the uh, UK. It's too early to be thinking of us. It's too late to go to bed. So, yeah, that particular piece of music was punchy, the way I like to hear it, uh, and I was very happy with it. And uh, I got my custom curve exactly the way I wanted it. I started out, I moved it around a little bit until I got it to where I went, yeah, this is what I want. This is sounding good coming out of the speakers. Now for you, hearing it on the YouTube channel, it doesn't sound any different no matter what I do because the sonar works is only affecting my speakers and not the signal. You just got to take my word for it on that kind of stuff. I went Then I went and listened to one of the all-time uh, great standbys you can listen to. I go into this uh, Two Against Nature. Uh, this is a great sound of record here. Uh, it's actually made for CD instead of a, um, an LP. Now, because of copyright issues, I can't play Janie Runaway by Steely Dan off of Two Against Nature. But it's a great sounding track, and I suggest you hunt it down and try and put it through your speakers. So there's a song that's just, you know, got great tight low end and uh, a ton of fun to listen to for me. And then when it comes to more powerful stuff, one of my faves is Radiohead. And in Rainbows, one of my favorites is the uh, intro to uh, Weird Fishes because you get to hear the drum kit. Once again, due to copyright issues, I can't play Weird Fishes by Radiohead. I tried to post it, but they said, nope, can't do that. The way this record d blossoms is is great because it start it's the the way the frequencies are introduced it's very smart the way they produced it and it's a, all, always been a great reference as far as if you want to know what your speakers sound like. So whatever is selected here is what shows up here where it says speakers and we see Apollo X8 right here and the, and we see that it's linked but you will not hear what this is until you apply the profile to Apollo X8. you got to click down here. So if you do so, it tells you it's doing it. it. says it's done. Now if we go over to the main monitor here, we see that the curve is employed, and this is the profile. Now inside the profile, this is the profile, but you can change within the profile instead of using the flat target that... I did not like, I want to use my custom target. So I click on my custom target. And now it says CUS right here, custom. But I'm not going to hear that until I apply the profile to Apollo X. So if I apply it, it will do it again. Now, if I look at this, it doesn't look any different, but it does sound different. I can grab a profile and take all the bass out and I will hear that change. So. You can A, B the correction of your monitors by main monitor correction, enable, and you can hear the relays clicking inside of your Apollo. If you disable it, you hear the relays click in there and you hear the change in your speakers. I hear my old curve here without any correction and I hear my new curve here with correction. And I will say that these two mixes here of this song called It's a Pleasure Knowing You are slightly different from each other. The first one I mixed a while back and it has too much mid-range and not enough bass in it. I did do a second mix 
to correct for those things that I heard when I took it out and heard it on different systems. This mix called Tweak, I compensated for that. And now listening to these two mixes with the correction applied with Sound ID reference here, I hear the problems of this mix in my speakers now that I did not hear prior to the correction. And this tweak mix here with the correction on my speakers now sounds the way I wanted it to sound. So that's a good sign, I think. And so you should hear the difference in these two mixes if I play them for you. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Rabbits could be a part of something bigger. It's a pleasure knowing you. That's the mix that had too much mid-range and not enough low end. And now I'm going to play the mix that was tweaked and sounds much better now in my speakers with the new correction. And that it's good be a part of something bigger. It's a pleasure knowing you. Knowing you. So this mix right here, labeled Tweak, translates much better to other systems and sounds very nice on my corrected speakers with the Sound ID reference uh, software applied. And this mix right here that did not translate very well to other systems with too much mid-range and not enough bass, sounds like it has too much mid-range and not enough bass on my corrected speakers now with the Sound ID reference curve applied. So from what I can tell, this is good news. So if the corrected mix sounds better to me and, I, and the mix that bothered me wasn't bothering me in my speakers when I mixed it originally, but now I'm hearing it in the speakers and I'm going, oh yeah, that's what was bothering me. So I am hearing the problems I was hearing in the older mix with the correction on the speakers and I'm hearing the tweaked mix sounding the way I thought it sounded in the first place. So sound ID reference by Sonarworks, full confidence in sound. Well, I have more confidence than I used to have. So I guess the bottom line is, do I like it or do I not like it? I'm going to say yes, I do like it because the songs that I know how they sound great from different artists sound better in my speakers now and the more of the way I want them to sound. And I'm able to make better judgments now. I do believe because the tweaked mix that I had sounds the way I expected it to sound now out of the speakers and the mix that was a little mmm sounded a little mmm in my speakers. So yeah, I think it's a good thing. Also, the one thing I did not find online when I was looking at videos was an explanation of how the software worked, okay, and how it interfaced with the Apollo uh, X8 Generation 1 that I have. It, it does integrate very easily, and once you wrap your head around the software, it's very good to work with. So yeah, I give it a thumbs up. It's a good thing. This is Rusty Smith for Record, Mix, Repeat. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe and please come back.